December 25th will bring many reasons to celebrate. It's an annual festival commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ, but in astronomy, that day is also the two-year anniversary of the launching of NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. Humanity's greatest space-based observatory of all time launched on Christmas Day 2021. James Webb has been our cosmic workhorse, revealing the universe in a whole new light with unprecedented resolution and wavelength coverage to view the cosmos. And now, to celebrate its second birthday, James Webb has just left astronomers feeling festive. Recently, it allowed them to image a distant colorful cluster of galaxies they have dubbed the Christmas Tree Galaxy Cluster. In this cluster, the James Webb Space Telescope discovered flickering Christmas lights in the form of 14 new transient objects, celestial objects that brighten dramatically before dimming. The Winter Wonderland is officially called Max 0416 and is located about 4.3 billion light years from Earth. As Hao Jing Yin, an associate professor in the University of Missouri Department of Physics and Astronomy, said in a statement, We're calling Max 0416 the Christmas Tree Galaxy Cluster both because it's so colorful and because of the flickering lights we find within it. Transients are objects in space, like individual stars, that appear to suddenly brighten by orders of magnitudes and then fade away. These transient objects appear bright for only a short period of time and then are gone. It's like we're peering through a shifting magnifying glass. Spotting so many transients in this galaxy was achieved by teaming the JWST up with the Hubble Space Telescope. The sheer number of transients spotted in one go, thanks to the duo, implies there are a lot more yet to be found within the Christmas Tree Galaxy Cluster. It's almost like the Christmas gift for astronomers that'll keep on giving. The light from the Christmas Tree Galaxy Cluster began its journey across the cosmos when the solar system, now 4.6 billion years old, was newly formed and just around 300 million years old. This would ordinarily make it too faint for even the Webb Telescope to see in detail, but a little trick, first acknowledged by Albert Einstein, made observing this cosmic Christmas a little easier. In his 1915 theory of general relativity, which concerns the nature of gravity, Einstein said objects of great mass must warp the very fabric of space and time, united as a single entity called space-time, giving rise to a curvature we experience as gravity. And when anything, including light, passes these curved regions of space, those things' paths get curved. The closer to the body of mass a thing is, the more extreme the curvature experiences. As a result, when an object passes between Earth and a distant light source, the light from that background object takes a varied amount of time to reach us, as its path isn't following a straight line due to the curvature created by the passing object. This can ultimately cause that background object to appear amplified from our vantage point. The concept is called gravitational lensing, as the intervening object acts as a natural cosmic magnifying glass. James Webb has been tapping into this phenomenon with great success to see some of the universe's earliest galaxies, and its view of the Christmas tree galaxy cluster is its latest example. Look at this picture, Yin said. We can see so many transients in certain regions of this area because of a phenomenon known as gravitational lensing, which is magnifying galaxies behind this cluster. Right now, we have this rare chance that nature has given us to get a detailed view of individual stars that are located very far away. While we are currently only able to see the brightest ones, if we do this long enough and frequently enough, we will be able to determine how many bright stars there are and how massive they are. Red, pink, and orange punctuated by bright. Blue stars like lights shining on A. Christmas tree, the running chicken. Nebula is about 71 light years wide and lies toward the constellation of Centaurus. It contains several separate regions, all of which are present in the new image, which covers a patch of the sky as wide as 25 full moons. The brightest region, which appears as the Rear of this cosmic fowl is known as IC. 2948 this area is stuffed with bright gas and dust plumage and punctuated with bright blue light from hot young stars these stars which are spread through the rest of the nebula as well are carving this cosmic chicken by emitting vast amounts of ultraviolet radiation which disperses gas and dust 
and thus helps to curtail further star formation but some regions of the running chicken known no joke as Bach. Globules are resisting this high energy radiation and can be seen as dark dense pockets of gas and dust sprinkled around the nebula further up the celestial chicken is a bright vertical pillar-like structure called IC 2944 which appears almost like a chicken wing in the process of flapping atop IC 2944 is the twinkling star lambda Centauri which is closer to Earth than the running chicken nebula at just 470 light years away the star is so bright that it's visible from Earth with the naked eye in the upper right of the image 2 emission nebula's regions of super hot ionized gas called gum 39 and gum 40 make up the head of the running chicken a further emission nebula gum 41 can be seen to the lower right of the image forming the foot of the cosmic chicken completing the new image is a sprinkling of white and blue stars that resemble falling flakes of snow each one as unique individual and complex as an actual snowflake meanwhile elsewhere in space to celebrate the festive season the hubble telescope also has just gifted us a dazzling starry snow globe which resembles something of a wonderland of christmas lights the image's subject is the billion star containing ugc 8091 an irregular dwarf galaxy located within the constellation virgo some seven million light years from earth to create the luminous chromatic effect we see scientists compiled data captured by the hubble space telescope wide field camera three an advanced camera for surveys between 2006 and 2021 they ran the data through 12 filters that sampled both broad and narrow wavelengths that covered mid ultraviolet to visible red light the red patches are thought to be interstellar hydrogen molecules while the sparkles within are older stars in the very background are other distant galaxies so far away they almost appear to be single stars truth why we think that seeing shapes in space telescope images christmas related or otherwise is just like seeing shapes in clouds it's all open to artistic interpretation but there's no denying that the images are beautiful no matter what they resemble in short even the cosmos is wishing you a happy holidays now on the threshold of the new year let's take a quick look at the most astonishing jaw-dropping james webb moment ms from 2023 won our most distant black hole ever it was only last month while combining chandra x-ray data with james webb's deep infrared views of galaxy cluster able 2744 that scientists revealed a tiny distant early galaxy with only around 10 to 100 million solar masses worth of material in it but that was incredibly X-ray luminous indicating an active black hole of around 9 million solar masses. Not only is this the most distant black hole ever discovered, it's also our first example of such an extreme mass ratio where the central black hole is right around as massive as all the stars and the host galaxy combined our understanding of black hole galaxy formation and coevolution will never be the same two new inside of the crab nebula in the year 1054 supernova went off in the milky way galaxy so brilliant and enduring it was visible from earth for a long period of time now nearly 1000 years later we can look in that same region of sky and find the crab nebula a supernova remnant more than 10 light years across with a young Energetic spinning neutron star at its core the crab. Pulsar whereas Hubble's visible light. Views highlight various elements and knots of gas that reflect light James. 
Webb's infrared views showcase the presence of dust-accelerated electrons, and even the carved-out features by the central pulsar's winds and magnetism, the question of the mass mystery or of where, all the supposedly missing material that would have been needed for the progenitor star to explode may yet find its solution in the still being analyzed. Webb. Data 3 James Webb's Deepest Ever Vow The James Webb Space Telescope Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, or JDS Collaboration has released a fully Zoomable explorable view of their field With various NCAM filters and N-SPEC Spectra capable of being overlaid atop An enormous set of the objects imaged Although this represents a relatively Narrow field of view in the sky it contains the most distant galaxy ever discovered so far as well as a slew of candidate objects that may yet prove to be even farther away it showcases the incredible reach and variety of what's possible with James Webb for a sneak peek inside the Orion. Under James Webb's sharp eyes there are an enormous number of brilliant glittering new stars still in the process of forming. Some of them shown here are Herbig Harrow objects, massive young stars highlighted by stellar outflows. In other cases, there are protostars still in the process of formation, young singlet and binary stars that have already finished forming, and nebulous regions that even James Webb cannot penetrate. Lastly, there were some surprises, Jupiter mass objects that are members of no stellar system, including a surprisingly large fraction of them that are binary objects. The images are as beautiful as the science is profound. The most distant gravitational lens ever discovered is at the center of this image. A massive compact galaxy is found located about 17 billion light years away within this expanding universe. The ring around it with two red spots is actually a single, more distant galaxy that's located along the same line of sight as the closer galaxy, but gravity has distorted it into a ring, an example of gravitational lensing. While more distant background lenses have been spotted, this represents the most distant foreground lens, the object actually doing the lensing ever discovered. The most massive galaxy cluster for its time, although galaxy clusters are found all across the universe, they're expected to grow larger and larger in mass over cosmic time. For the time at which it was discovered in the universe, the El Gordo Galaxy Cluster, imaged here by James Webb, is the most massive one known, with over two quadrillion solar masses of material inside it. Despite its light coming from more than five billion years ago, within this cluster marked A and B are the gravitationally lensed galaxies known as Lafa and Flaca. In reality, both of these lensed galaxies are completely normal. Their light is stretched into these unusual shapes by the foreground gravity of the galaxy cluster in front of them. The most distant red supergiant star ever located in the same field as El Gordo and hence in the same field as the fishhook and the Lafa lensed galaxies is a single red supergiant star known as Quiller, the most distant red supergiant ever discovered. Although the previously discovered star, Endel, also imaged by James Webb but discovered first by Hubble, is even farther, this shows that finding individual stars in the early universe isn't a one-off proposition but rather that the combination of Webb's incredible capabilities plus the enhancement of gravitational lensing can reveal individual stars, farther back in cosmic time than via any other method. Dusty secrets within spiral galaxies, most of the images we see of spiral galaxies are taken in visible light where the stars shine brightly, but where neutral matter, particularly dust grains, appear dark, blocking that light. Not so with Webb's Miri instrument, which highlights and illuminates the dust inside these galaxies, showing the locations of future and current new star formation. In this view of Galaxy NGC 749, not only are the dust lanes prominently revealed, along with the pinkish-white regions showcasing regions where new stars are already forming, but the center of the galaxy exhibits brilliant diffraction spikes, evidence for an actively feeding supermassive black hole at the galaxy's center. The ring nebula viewed with both the NCAM and MIRI instruments independently, this nebula is among the most famous planetary nebulae known, what's left behind when a dying sun-like star blows off its outer layers in its death throes, while its core contracts down to form a white dwarf. 
you can find in both views intricate details of the inner filaments, which are actively being evaporated away by radiation, as well as roughly 10 concentric arcs outside of the main ring feature that are hydrocarbon rich. In the Miri image, no other observatory has ever revealed this level of detail inside the ring nebula. The stunning view of Saturn's rings, whereas Saturn itself is a relatively cool planet with a cloud and haze-rich atmosphere separated into bands by latitude, it's mostly very faint and in infrared light. However, its rings are 99.9% .9 composed of water ice, which is even more reflective in infrared light than visible light, leading to this unique and stunning view of Saturn's rings in this image from James Webb. The A, B, C, and F rings are all visible, as are the Cassini division and the NT gap. Saturn was the final gas giant planet in our solar system imaged by James Webb, completing our solar system's family portrait. Uranus, new and improved, although James Webb caught its first view of Uranus in February of 2023, the data it acquired on September 4th, 2023, shows a far more spectacular view. Nine of its 13 inner moons plus all five of its main large moons are all revealed, as are at least five of its rings, along with several features on the planet itself. A dense polar cap that fades away toward equatorial latitudes punctuated by a dark band and with Uranian storms ranging closer to the equator as Uranus approaches its solstice for the first time since 1986. These web views teach us information that no other observatory can reveal. A cosmic sparkler, although this shows a portion of the very first science image released by James Webb, it wasn't until January of 2023 that this remarkable feature known as the Sparkler Galaxy was discovered in Webb data. In the yellow boxes shown above are three images of the same distant galaxy lensed, stretched, and magnified by the gravity of the foreground cluster SMAC 0723. The sparkles that are most easily visible in the largest central image are actually globular clusters that are brightly undergoing new episodes of star formation. When James Webb examined these clusters in detail, it found that they already had older populations of stars inside, shedding new light on how second bursts of star formation can occur inside globular clusters, a feature that only a fraction of all known globular clusters possess. An intermediate belt surprise, we've often looked at our solar system as the prototype for what we expect to find elsewhere in the universe. While planets can exist both close to and far from a star, we expect there to be a series of frost lines, with the innermost one corresponding to an asteroid belt and the outermost one corresponding to a Kuiper belt. Yet when James Webb examined the young stellar system fallout, it found something our solar system doesn't possess, an intermediate belt found exterior to the inner disk where the asteroid belt should be but interior to the Kuiper belt analog. Is this feature typical of stellar systems, meaning we're the outlier, or is it unusual, meaning it's the outlier? More data is needed, but this is a puzzle we didn't even know would need to be solved prior to 2023. The most distant galaxy cluster ever, earlier in 2023, scientists spectroscopically analyzed a series of distant, very red, faint galaxies found in the field of view behind Pandora's cluster A2744. They found that at least seven of these galaxies are at precisely the same redshift, indicating the presence of a proto-galaxy cluster, the earliest one ever found, at just 650 million years after the Big Bang. While Hubble had found the earliest proto-galaxy cluster previously known at 800 million years after the Big Bang, and the Sears collaboration found one just 1.2 billion years after the Big Bang, this cluster was a mouthful of a name of A2744Z7P90.